On the morning of December 16, 1935, the lifeless body of Hollywood star Thelma Todd was found slumped over in her 1932 Lincoln convertible. It was ruled an accidental poisoning by carbon monoxide with suicidal tendencies involved. But many people believe that there is much, much more to it. Hey guys, so today's video is all about a case that I'm honestly surprised I haven't done a video about in the past. It is all about the mysterious death of old Hollywood actress Thelma Todd. Now, I do a lot of videos on my channel that are about more popular topics, but if you are an OG subscriber of mine, you know that it is the stories that have kind of faded into the background with the passing of time that are the ones that I'm really passionate about. I like bringing light to them and even though they're not as talked about anymore, they're just as important as most of the current ones in my opinion. While I was originally going to do one video including a ton of mysterious old Hollywood deaths and the more that I was researching each one, I kind of realized that they're all super interesting and there's a lot of details to them, a lot of information and I think they all deserve a video of their own, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. This case though has so many rumors surrounding it, which is why it kind of made the impact that it did when it originally happened. But I'm going to be including all the facts, the first-hand accounts, and all the rumors that kind of made this case what it is and had people talking all these years. So let's just get into it. Thelma Alice Todd was an American actress born on July 29, 1906 in Lawrence, Massachusetts, appearing in over 120 pictures and short films from the years of 1926 to 1935. Thelma was best known for her comedic roles in Marx Brothers films and alongside silver screen greats such as Charlie Chase, Buster Keaton, and Laurel and Hardy. Now, off the screen, Thelma had a very active social life. She was known for being a bit of a party girl, even coining the nickname Hot Toddy. In August of 1934, she opened a cafe at Pacific Palisades called Thelma Todd's Sidewalk Cafe, lying on the Pacific Coast Highway between Santa Monica and Malibu. Now, she owned this popular cafe with her business partner and supposed lover, director Roland West, and his wife, actress Jewel Carmen. The three of them lived in the residences above the cafe. Now, this was a very odd living arrangement, and as you can probably tell, this created a lot of problems between the three of them. On the night of December 14, 1935, Thelma attended a party at the Trocadero restaurant on Sunset Strip, held by English actor Stanley Lupino for his 16-year-old daughter, Ida Lupino, who would later go on to be a very famous actress herself. Thelma's chauffeur, Ernest Peters, dropped her off at the Trocadero restaurant around 8 p.m. He drove her mother home and then went back to the Trocadero restaurant around 9 p.m. and waited for her to get out so he could drive her home. Now, Thelma was a really good friend of Stanley's, so she was obviously invited to this huge party. But so was her ex-husband, Pat DeSicco. Pat DeSicco was an agent, a movie producer, and an alleged mobster. Thelma and Pat were married from the years of 1932 to 1934 and divorced due to his violent and abusive behavior towards her. Pat arrived to the party with his date, an actress named Margaret Lindsay, resulting in a huge heated argument between Thelma and Pat. Thelma claimed that Pat only came to the party to completely embarrass her. The fight ended, Thelma dabbled at the party a few more hours, and she left in her limo around 3 a.m. At around 3.30 a.m., her chauffeur dropped her off at the foot of the 63 steps leading up to Roland West's house. And what exactly happened after that becomes a mystery. On the morning of December 16, 1935, Thelma's maid, Mae Whitehead, went into the garage of Jewel Carmen and what she found there would forever stay with her. Miss Todd's body was found slouched over in her convertible with the ignition still on and the gas completely ran out. 
May ran down to the restaurant to tell Roland what she found. They went to the scene and called the police immediately. After examining the body, the detectives of the LAPD determined her death was a result of accidental carbon monoxide poisoning with underlying suicidal tendencies. Believing that she came back to the property was a bit drunk, that she was possibly locked out of the house because it was so late, and being the state of mind that she was in, she decided to go into the garage to seek warmth. She got into the car, turned the heat on, fell asleep, and succumbed to poisoning from carbon monoxide. Simple, right? Well, there's a lot of things in this case that just do not add up. Now, it was said on the final report that there were suicidal tendencies involved in her death, but her family and her friends just believed that this could not have been the case. Claiming Thelma had a successful career, was in good spirit, showing no signs of suicidal thoughts. Also, on the autopsy report, it said that there was peas and carrots in her stomach. But weirdly enough, there was no peas and carrots on the menu of the Trocadero restaurant the night that she died. She also had a little bit of blood on her lip, which they said possibly happened as she passed out and her head hit the steering wheel. But a lot of people believe that it might have been the result of foul play. There are so many rumors surrounding this case. There's claims that she not only had a bloody lip, that she also had a chipped tooth, she was badly bruised, and she had a cracked rib. And her family and friends insisted that they went into further investigation into finding out if this was a murder case. So they did. A grand jury probe was held, but after four weeks of testimony, the case was closed with no more evidence found of it possibly being a murder. But skeptics of the court's final decision believe that Thelma Todd's case is in fact a homicide case. And there's a few suspects they believe that it possibly could be. The first suspect is one that you guys are probably not that surprised by. Her ex-husband, Pat DeSicco. They did have a fiery argument the night that she died, and he was known for being very angry and a very wrathful man. He later went on to marry Gloria Vanderbilt in 1941. They ended up divorcing in 1945 because he showed the same exact signs of violence towards her that he did towards Thelma. She claimed that he would take her head and slam it against the wall and leave her with black eyes on the regular. But did he go to the extreme of killing his ex-wife Thelma Todd though? There was no concrete evidence connecting him to the scene, but they did get into that huge argument and a lot of people think he may be the one to blame. Another known person who was a huge suspect of this case is Pat's good friend, a very popular name, Lucky Luciano. Lucky Luciano was an Italian-American mobster involved in much illegal activity such as gambling, prostitution, and extortion. Now Lucky and Thelma had a romantic relationship, but a very rocky one at that. There was a lot of abuse involved in their relationship. Now not long before Thelma died, Lucky came to Thelma with an offer to turn part of her cafe into an illegal gambling parlor. She refused, and it is said that that did not sit well with Lucky. Many people believe that the mobster picked up Thelma after she was dropped off by her chauffeur. That he took her someplace to eat, possibly that's explaining why the peas and carrots were in her stomach, made her feel comfortable, and then dropped her off, killed her, and made it look like a complete accident. Even Thelma's own attorney believed that Lucky was the one to blame for her death. And it is also said that Lucky left on a plane out of LA a few hours before Thelma's body was found. Or did Roland West's wife commit the crime? Was Jewel Carmen extremely jealous over her husband and Thelma's affair? Jewel actually gave the strangest testimony of all in court though. Jewel stated she saw Thelma at an intersection of Hollywood and Vine with a very handsome stranger in the passenger seat on Sunday morning after the sun was up. This claim was extremely bizarre because due to police reports, Thelma was already dead by the time that Joel claims to have seen her. And family and friends were also very confused because Thelma was found on Monday morning in the exact same clothes that she was wearing Saturday into Sunday at the party. 
and they say that there's just no way that Thelma wouldn't have changed her clothes before going to bed or at least the next morning before going out and doing errands. This just left everyone in complete confusion. Or did Roland West himself commit the crime? Maybe he was jealous over Thelma having affairs with other men besides just him. During Roland's testimony in court, he did say that instead of helping her into bed that Sunday morning, he did lock the doors to the apartment and went to bed. There is also a rumor that in 1952, Roland made a deathbed confession to his friend, actor Chester Morris, saying that he had a lot more involvement in Thelma's death than what he just said in court. But this was never proven to be completely true or false. No matter the strange evidence or the testimonies that literally didn't make any sense at all, in the end it was ruled an accident. People still believe to this day though that there was more to it, but we may never truly know what exactly happened on the early hours of December 15th, 1935. Now, the strange factors that made up Thelma's death is the reason that it created such a media frenzy. Every newspaper and magazine for months were covering the death of this beloved screen actress. Her funeral was open to the public, her casket surrounded by yellow roses. Thousands showed up to see her one last time. She was cremated not long after her funeral so no more investigating of her body could ever be done. Her remains were placed in her mother's casket after her mother's passing in 1969, and they were buried in Bellevue Cemetery in Thelma's hometown of Lawrence, Massachusetts. In current years though, Thelma is creating a lot of talk again for possibly being a soul that may not be at rest. Thelma's Cafe is now a production company, and staff members claim to sometimes witness a filmy apparition resembling Miss Todd making its way down the stairs. Thelma's Cafe is not the only spot though. The garage where her body was found has a ton of activity also. Witnesses say they hear strange noises coming from it on the regular, cold spots, and a popular smell of car fumes. Yet the garage is now a storage area, and no cars have been parked in there for years. Whether it was an accident, it was suicide, or it was in fact a murder, it is said that Thelma has not found peace, and her death remains a Hollywood mystery still to this day. So I really hope you guys liked that video. This was honestly one of my favorite stories that I have ever done research for on my channel. I tried to include a lot of videos and pictures and evidence and everything because I know you guys like that and I just really tried to do this story justice and I hope I didn't sound too scripted or anything like I just really wanted to set the mood and make this a really good video because this entire story and this entire case is super interesting to me I really hope you guys liked it and if you have any more recommendations for stories or strange, mysterious deaths, or anything in general, definitely put those down below. I read every single comment. And if you're not already and you like that video, definitely make sure to subscribe. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.